Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve permutations, leak code number 46. So we're given an array nums of distinct integers and we need to return all of the possible permutations. And you can do this in any order. So if we are given the numbers one, two, three, then the possible permutations are, well, we could start with one. And so you get one, two, three, and then one, three, two. You can start with two. So you get two, one, three, and two, three, one. Or you could start with three. And so you get three, one, two, and three, two, one. It's basically just all possible rearrangements of these numbers. So let's start this off with a little bit of math here. We could start with any of the numbers one, two, or three. And so there's three possibilities for our starting point. If you've picked one of these numbers, say we picked one or two or three, doesn't matter. Well, then we've used one of the numbers. And so you can't use that number again. There would then be two different numbers you could pick as the second spot. And finally here, if you've then picked two of the numbers already, then only one number remains. And so there's only one possibility there. If you multiply all of these together, you are going to get three times two times one, which is actually shorthanded to three factorial. That is equal to six here. We should end up with six solutions. So let's make sure that we do. Okay, so our solution starts as empty right now. And as we just said, it could start with any of the three numbers. So it could start with one. So if we did that, it would have just one. It could also start with two, or it could start with three here. Okay, so this level was our starting point. Here, we are now going to decide what is the second number. So if we picked one, well, then we can't pick one again. So it'd be either one and then two, or we could have one and then three. If we started with two, it could be either two and then one or it could be two and then three. And if we instead started with three, then we could have three and then one, or we could have three and then two. Okay, so one last iteration of this here, and it's actually pretty simple here, because as we already showed, if you've picked two numbers, there's only one number that could be that last number. That's the only one that's left here. And so this would then turn into the solution of one, two, and then three. This one would be one, three, and then two, two, then one, and then three, this one would be two, and then three, and then one, three, one, two, and this would be three, two, and one. Okay, so these are all of our possible solutions here. We would then not do this anymore because we've used up all the numbers. You could basically make sure that we're at a base case here or a leaf node when the length of this array is actually equal to the length of your array here. So since their lengths are both three, so that's how you know we're basically at a leaf node here. And as you can see here, we have six solutions. We also also don't have any duplicates, you can verify that. And so this is the correct tree. Okay, so the way we'd actually go down this is actually by doing a DFS. So we would do a DFS basically over this imaginary tree to enumerate all the solutions. And we'd also start off with two lists. So we're going to have one called res, which is just a global list that's basically going to collect all of our solutions. That's eventually going to have all of these things. It's the thing we'd want to return. And we'd also have an empty array called sol. And so that is going to basically represent this bad boy. As we traverse this tree, we are going to modify Sol as a global. So Sol starts empty here, and we are going to do a DFS. So the way the computer would do this is not basically a breadth first search over this tree. We're going to do a DFS. It's much easier that way. Okay, so our Sol starts here. It is an empty array. And this branches here, these are basically representing a for loop over these possible numbers. It's doing a for loop over this array right here, and one at a time, considering each of the numbers. So when we're considering the value of one, we say, okay, let's actually use that value of one. And so Saul needs to append that value. We say, let's temporarily use one and let's now continue this search. So let's go over here. We say, okay, let's append the value of two. We do one more and we append the value of three. Boom, this is when the length of these two arrays are equal. And so res, which is going to store our whole list of solutions here says, okay, well, let's actually just append over here a copy of of Sol. So this is solely just a copy of this array right here. And now we need to go back up here. And when we do that, we don't want three anymore. We need to undo the fact that we chose to use that. And so we are going to pop that last value, which is three. Then when we go back up again, we go over here, we have to pop off the fact that we used two. And now we are ready to go down this path, which is going to use three. 
So Saul says, okay, let's actually append the value of three. We go over here, and so we append the value of two. Boom, we hit a solution again because these two lengths are equal. Res is going to get a copy of Saul, which is one of these. And we are going to go back up, which is going to pop off two. And we're going to continue this pattern. Basically, it's going to go in this order where we traverse all of these in a traditional DFS. That's going to take that path over all of them. It's going to go back up to the beginning. And then at the very end of this, we could just return our result here. So at every single step here, we are actually iterating over our numbers array. We are iterating over each of these values. And that's true not just for the top here, it's true at every single location. So when we go over here, we had picked the value of one, but then we're still doing a for loop over the numbers here. And actually, we're still even iterating over one because that is still part of the array, but we're gonna have an if statement that basically says, okay, well, one is already in our solution. One is already in Sol here. So we don't really wanna go down down this path here because that would lead to using the number multiple times, which is not correct. So at every iteration here, wherever we are here, we're gonna iterate over all of the numbers, but we're only going to go down the paths of the numbers that we haven't used yet in the solution. Okay, so what is the time and space complexity of this solution? Well, the time complexity, we kind of already did the math here. This total number of stuff is going to be n factorial. So we had six because this is three factorial. The length of this is three. If we instead have had four numbers, then we would actually have four factorial, that's equal to four times three times two, which is equal to 24. This will be a roughly n factorial solution. It would actually be a little bit worse than that because for each of these spots, we're actually iterating over the ends. And it's even bigger than that because only this level is n factorial. There's all this other stuff too. The time complexity of this gets a little bit lax when you're talking about these crazy exponential solutions. This would roughly be a big O of n factorial solution. Okay, and the space complexity of this, again, this is storing space, although that's part of the solution, so we're not really going to consider just the solution there. The space that we're really going to consider here is because the recursive call stack takes up space, and so the depth of this, this could go as deep as n, because basically we're just doing n numbers going down here. So the space complexity of this would be roughly big O of n. Okay, so we'll start by getting n is equal to the length of the numbers, and we'll get an array called answer, which is going to be basically that thing we're going to return. It'll have that list of lists, and also sol, which is going to be basically a partial solution. It's going to dynamically append and pop as we move through these solutions. Okay, so we'll make a function, and I'll call it backtrack. This actually doesn't need to take any parameters at all, because we know we're at a base case if the length of our solution, I know currently it's empty, but we're going to append numbers to this down below. If the length of this solution is actually equal to n, so if we've used up all of the numbers, we know we're at a base case, and so we have a solution, we'd answer.append, so give answer, basically a copy of solution, answer.append a solution copy. And again, you'd want a copy of solution because if you just passed Sol, that would just be a reference to Sol and you don't want that. You want a snapshot in time of the numbers it currently is. Okay, and if we're at a base case here, we really just want to return. There's nothing else to do. Otherwise, if we are not at a base case, as we said, we want to loop over the numbers. So for each X in the nums, we want to go down the path of using that number only if X is not in Sol. So if we've already used that number as part of our solution, we don't want to go down this path. We'll only use the numbers that we haven't seen so far. If we decide to use the number, we would want to do a solution.append x. So that's basically saying we want to use that number. We then want to deal with the repercussions of using that. So go down that path. That is just backtrack. So that's automatically going to go down that path. Remember, solution and answer are both globals. We backtrack. And then when we actually return back over here, well, we need to to undo the fact that we decided to use that number. And so to undo it, we do the solution.pop, which basically allows us to do the recursive backtracking part of this. We undo those effects that we made so we can iterate over all of the possible solutions. Okay, so that's our backtrack function. So we call backtrack that is going to give all of our different solutions into answer. We're going to have all of those different solutions. And from there, we can just return the answer. And if we were to run that, that will work. Okay, so as we already said here, the time complexity of this, this is going to be roughly an n factorial solution because if you, as you may have known in like a probability class, there is n factorial permutations of a list of numbers. And the space complexity comes from the recursive call stack and is going to take up O of 
and space the height of that imaginary tree. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.